This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your partner to easily set up websites and online stores. Oh no! Hey there, it's me, Elisa, and in today's video I will be stepping completely out of my comfort zone. A while ago I made a poll on my community tab about some future projects that you guys would like to see. And y'all voted for the Minecraft creep at all. <laughs> because of the unique aesthetics of Minecrafts... Minecraft? Because of the unique aesthetics of Minecraft being so different than what I <laughs> usually do, this will be a big challenge for me. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I beat the Ender Dragon! Let's, let's go! go! Let's freaking go! Oh my god, you know, I beat the Ender Dragon! So when thinking about what doll buys I would want to use for such a project, I came across this 3D printable doll on Etsy. I love the proportions and the cartoony look of it so much, so I bought it and gave Blue Pixie some instructions to change the face and give the doll some human feet. As always, she did absolute magic and delivered an amazing creeper-like face. With those changes done, I could then mix the green skin tone. <laughs> I didn't have a plan for the doll outfit yet, but I definitely wanted my doll to have green skin. And then it was time to get to printing with some obstacles. There we go! Don't you just love it when prints fail? <laughs> Sadly, failed prints happen sometimes, but eventually I got everything printed. Now I need to remove all the supports from the pieces, wash them in isopropanol and cure them in my curing station. Curing is essential to get rid of all the gooey stickiness of the resin pieces. All done, let's see all the pieces. I always love seeing all the doll parts spread out on my workspace. The green turned out so nice as well and I'm stoked to assemble this doll now. Let's see how she looks all together. Okay, she's so cool. The face makes her look so badass already. For size references, I'm holding her in my hands this time. She's about 26 centimeters small and I really love her dimensions. I can't wait to get to work on her, but first I need to gather some inspiration. Have you ever wanted a place to save all your inspiration for your Minecraft world? I got the perfect sponsor for you, Squarespace. Because get it? Squares. <laughs> Clean and professional portfolio gallery designs will let you create a beautiful website. And you can even make password protected areas for very special games. If you want to, you can even connect your social media accounts by just changing the links and icons. So easy. Never accidentally blow up pictures again. <laughs> Funny because of the creeper. Images will automatically be sized to make sure they always look great within your website. Simply drag and drop the images into position. And if you end up setting up a shop, you can even sell your physical or digital pieces because Squarespace has the right tools for it. So if this sounds right up your ally, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. <laughs> And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel to save 10% of your first purchase of a domain or website using my code moonlightjewel. That's squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel, code moonlightjewel. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to mining. <laughs> so while searching for inspiration, I came across this amazing artwork from Parallel and I knew I wanted to make a doll inspired by this. So I reached out to them and asked them if they were okay with that idea. They said yes, so let's start on the outfit right away. I will first make the top. For that I made a grey pixel pattern and printed it on some white printable fabric vinyl. I printed the exact shape of the pattern piece already and cut it out roughly with my scissors to see how much fabric I will need for it and also cut out the fabric roughly. Okay, I cut this out exactly now and when the press is hot I will peel it off and put it on the fabric and then iron it on. This printable vinyl is a peel-off vinyl, so you peel off the layer you printed your design on and then iron it onto the fabric, protecting it with some backing paper. You then wait for it to cool down and peel off the paper and have a perfect print. But we will need some more prints, so I cut out some white fabric vinyl, tried to weed out the smallest letters I have ever cut, cut and place them on the fabric piece and iron them on. 
Now I can finally cut out the actual pattern piece with some seam allowance. I cut some notches into the seam allowance along the neckline and later armholes, so I can more easily glue around the seam with my trusty uh -huh. Uhu glue stick. After gluing around the neckline and armhole seams, I can then fold together the side seams and sew them together finished sides in. Such small pieces I like to sew with paper to prevent the machine from eating the fabric. I then just rip off the paper after sewing and have a nice seam. Side seams done, now we can glue around the bottom seam allowance with my Uhu glue. I carefully fold it around to make sure it's nice and even. And with a little velcro added in the back, the top is done and I'm happy that the pixel print turned out this nice and that the small letters were cuttable on the Cricut because I think it's such a cool detail. On to the shorts. For those I cut out the pattern pieces from black denim-like fabric and will first glue around the pocket opening. I cut it in notches and use my Uhu glue to secure it. And after that I'm going to top stitch them just a millimeter from the edge for a clean finish. Now I take my pocket bags, place them underneath the pocket opening like this and secure them here and here with a couple of stitches. That looks neat! I then take some glue and glue down the pocket bag so we have some actual little pockets. And then I can join the front seam of the shorts by placing the front pieces on top of each other, finished sides in and hemming this seam. I then just stitch a little fake fly along the middle of the pants like this. With the front part done, let's get working on the back part of the pants. First I'm taking the back pieces and will sew the little darts that I marked with notches and fabric marker. Fold them together and sew them like this. And then I can take my front pants again and sew on the back pieces along the side seams, finished sides in. Okay, ready for the waistband! I prepared it off cam by gluing around the top seam allowance and now pin it onto the pants good sides facing each other. I align the middle and use many needles to make sure it's free of wrinkles before joining both pieces. And then I prep the tiny belt loops and also sew them on top of the waistband. We're almost done! Now I just need to fold the pants together and first sew the back seam, leaving a gap open for the closure. And then I join the crotch seam from one leg to the other. You might wonder why I didn't clean up the bottom seam. That is because I want the pants to have a distressed look, so I actually cut some small holes into the pants and stress and pull the threads a little bit. This will look super cool in the end, I feel. But to finish off the pants, they need a belt, so I prepared some black fabric prints by cutting and weeding them and will then place some diagonal black stripes on white fabric and iron them on. I peel off the transfer vinyl while it's still hot and then cut out the big stripe with seam allowance like this. I then fold and glue around the seam allowance towards the back of the belt. After I did that to both sides, it looks like this. Now I will add this tiny snap buckle. Thank you so much Barb from Enchanterium for sending me some of these last minute, because otherwise they wouldn't have arrived in time. You were a lifesaver for this project. After adding the buckle to one side and fray checking the other end, I will then be able to adjust the tightness of the belt and it honestly looks just so good with the small buckle. And with that the pants and belt are done. I really like the distressed look of these pants and I think together with the belt they will look really realistic and finished in the end. So let's make the jacket now. Okay, now I'm going to iron on this green stripe and then iron on those little TNT patches, like this. Okay, let's do that. So for the sleeves I made these little decoration prints first and also prepared the smaller black and white stripes I ironed earlier. Then I first fold some rectangles I cut from stretchy fabric and will sew them onto the bottom of the sleeve like this, stretching them while sewing to create a gathered cuff. I do that on both sleeves and also secured the little black and white stripe pieces. With the sleeves fully prepared, I can then take the bodice of the jacket and join the sleeves and bodice. Very nice! But the collar is still missing. I prepped it off cam with a print and glued around the top seam allowance and can now sew it onto the jacket finished sides in. Awesome, we're almost done! Now for my favorite part, joining the sleeve and side seams. I sew them finished sides in and end up with this. 
I will now be adding another little snap buckle to the outfit by gluing it onto the stripes of one of the sleeves. And I will also be gluing around the bottom and front seam allowance of the jacket off cam. For the last part I will be adding an actual separable zipper by simply top stitching the pieces on. Okay, to sew on this zipper I'm using a little zipper foot because I can sew closer to um, the edge and it's a lot better with that. Yes, I'm filming with one hand and sewing with the other. Ah, this is hard. But you guys can see how close I can sew with this. It's really nice. And with the zipper attached to the jacket, the jacket is done and I really like the overdimensional zipper. It fits the big hands, head and feet of the doll and almost makes her look cute. <laughs> Upon further inspection of the artwork you might notice a little fanny pack, so let's make that too. The first thing I'm doing here is also adding a little print that simply states what creepers like to do. I then just cut a little slit into the back like this and will glue around the seam allowances of this slit first. I use my Uhu glue and carefully fold around the small pieces first and then the longer seam allowances. I end up with a gap like this and can now place a zipper right into the gap, top stitch it in and shorten it. I also made some loops with rings for the strap later on and secured them before placing on the back side of the bag and completely sew it on finished sides in. Turned inside out it looks like this and it has an actual functioning zipper. It is technically completely unnecessary to make the bag like this but hey why not I guess. <laughs> Now I just needed to add a strap with a little snap buckle again and the back is done. I really like how it looks and you can easily put it on the doll with the little buckle. Guess my creeper can pack some TNT now. <laughs> okay, so for her trucker base cap, I'm going to cut the brim out of some green fabric. I already did it very roughly and I will add some white stripes to the lower side of the brim. And I will cut this from white fabric and layer it with some foam, that's the front of the cap. And the side panels will be cut from green fabric that I first layer with this green pixel print that I made. So we are going to go to the iron press now and iron all the pieces first before cutting them out and starting to assemble the cap. Okay. Let's do this! So as you can see I need to prepare quite some stuff in order to make the cap. I honestly had to look up how to make base caps because this is the first time I will be trying my hands on making one. Exciting! Since the back of the cap will be made from green pixel fabric I'm going to iron that onto some green fabric using the peel off printable fabric vinyl again. Then I'm taking one of the brim pieces and iron on some white stripes to it. This will be the underside of the brim. Peeling of the transfer vinyl is so satisfying always. When all the pieces were ironed, I then take my pattern pieces and trace them on the back side of the fabric to make sure I will align the pieces perfectly when sewing. I will need four of the green panels for the cap. When they were all cut, I put them to the side first. Alongside the front piece I cut from the foam layered white fabric. Then I'm taking the brim and will first place the finished sides towards the inside and sew them together along the outer line that I marked on the inside of the fabric. After hemming that I cut away the seam allowance. Then I can fold the pieces inside out. I already cut a brim from some thick cardstock and will now insert it into the fabric brim and clip it in place folding the seam slightly towards the underside of the brim. I then very carefully stitch along the inside seam as close to the brim as possible with my zipper foot. This was a bit tricky but it looks so good. I can now cut away the excess fabric and just leave a seam allowance. With the brim done let's assemble the cap. First I take two green panels and will join them together like this. For more stability I also top stitch down the seam allowances to each side and also join the other two green panels. Now I can join both pieces like this and end up with something that almost looks like a cap. 
I then simply need my front panel and first sew the dart like this. And after that it is finally time to join the front panel and the back side of the cap. This was really tricky to sew but it worked and after top stitching the seam allowances it looked like this. Now I am gluing around the seam allowances of the cap with my best buddy the Uhu Alice Kleber. Whoa! Yankee with, with no, no brim! brim. <laughs> time to attach the brim. I cut the seam allowances into little pieces, spread some glue on it and then carefully glue it into the cap. I tried to push the cap over the seam of the brim so you won't be able to see it. Oh my god, this looks so cool already! To enhance the bottom seam, I then take some thick interfacing and iron it to the inside of the cap. It would have probably been easier with a smaller iron, but I only have this big one, so I had to be careful. It looked nice and clean afterwards, and with that I could finally add the creeper face. I simply ironed it on with my iron this time, and it worked just fine. Then I just added some final touches like the stripe print and some rings to the brim and for the last piece I cured a little resin drop under my UV lamp, painted it green with some acrylic paint and then glued it on top of the cap like this. And with that the cap is done and I think it turned out really nice for the first base cap slash trucker cap that I have ever made. Almost looks like Minecraft merch. <laughs> Alright, let's make her some sneakers. While printing the doll in green, I had some space on the print bed left and also printed some shoe bases Blue made for me already. To make them match the colors on the artwork, I first paint the sole of them white with a couple layers of white acrylic paint before painting one of the shoe caps red and the other one green. When they were both dry, they looked like this and now I can proceed with the shoes. First I cut the tongs from green and red fabric and ironed on the little patch with a creeper face to them. I then made some more of the grey pixel fabric and enhanced it with some interfacing. I then continue and trace my shoe pieces onto the backside of the fabric and cut them out. Now I place them together good sides in and sew the back seam of the shoe and top stitch down the seam allowances flat. Then I take the tongs of the shoes, spread some Uhu glue on them and glue the tongs to the shoe bases like this. I hold them in place until the glue is tacky enough and let them dry for a bit. And of course I do the same to the other shoe. I made some fake shoelaces off cam already and placed them onto one of the shoes to my liking like this and now just have to glue them in place. These won't be actual working shoelaces but they will look real. Making these weird crafty things is always so much fun to me for some reason. I will now glue some red laces to the green shoe as well and end up with this. Now we can finally take the pixel pieces and glue on a grey heel piece I made from some iron on grey fabric vinyl. I let that dry and then cut a zigzag along the bottom of the shoe like this. To glue them into shape I prepared a cardboard sole and will now first glue the center of the shoe piece to the center back of the sole. I let that dry a bit and then can fold it slowly into shape. And then I glue around the sides one at a time. This step is really finicky, so really take your time because the cleaner you make this the better the shoe will look. When everything was dry I then melt down the fabric a little bit with my iron to make it a little flatter. That should work. The time has finally come to join the back of the shoe part with the rest of the shoe. I again use Uhu glue because I like that it gives you a bit of work time, but hot glue should also work if you're a pro. To make an actual closure for the shoe, I prepared this little snap buckle again and glue the sides of the straps to the shoe like this. This was easier to do while putting the shoe onto the doll. And yeah, we just made some really cute sneakers. I always wanted to make a pair of two different colored shoes and they are so, so cool. I also really like the comeback of the pixel pattern from the top here. To finish off the outfit, I also made this tiny choker with a countdown of Ken and these two creeper leg warmers. I wanted to make socks first, but wasn't sure the doll feet would fit into the shoes with a sock, so leg warmers it is. Okay. Let's give the creeper some hair. It's the eye of the spider, it's poison, it won't bite. Oh, look out. 
I already made a wig cap of Cam from some black stretchy fabric and wrapped the doll in cling film. I might have harvested another wig in order to get some hair wefts and then start hot gluing the wefts onto the head. I usually use hot glue for wigs because I'm just too impatient to wait for the PVA glue to dry. You just have to be careful not to burn yourself. Some of you guys advised me to get some silicone fingers to prevent the burns and I already ordered them but they sadly didn't arrive in time for this video. I basically just glue wefts around the head in swirls until I reach the top of the head. This technique gives you a good base for hairstyles in my opinion. For the last two wefts on top I will tape some wefts onto some cardboard, fold them around and secure them with heat. And then I can glue them on top of the wig for a clean finish. With the wig assembled it is time for some styling. First I chop off some hair. Then I tie the back of her hair in pigtails and cut and style the front hair with gel and got to be hairspray. Hairstyling is my absolute nemesis so it's really try and error every time. I think I made it work though in the end and just need to straighten the pigtails with my iron. And yeah, I think the wig looks pretty cool like this. I really like the spiky bangs. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm sweating, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. Oh my god! Run, 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 run! So before we finish up the doll, I kind of had the idea that my creeper doll lives inside an actual Minecraft creeper. So let's build one. For this, my dad was so sweet to help me. I made the blueprint and he cut out all the panels from PVC sheets. After that, we took some special PVC plastic glue that is like super glue and joined the panels that belong together. We glued it with the help of a 90 degrees angle piece to align them perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a desk. They however needed to harden completely for 24 hours, so we taped all the glued edges and had to wait. So for the door we are going to duct tape it like this so it's closable. Instead of an actual hinge, we did the unhinged ah! easy solution to just use duct tape. It will work just fine. Yep, see, perfect. Here I just put the pieces together to see how it will look like in the end. Oh. Okay, so all the Reba pieces are done and now I'm going to remove the protective vinyl and then print out all the panels to glue them onto the creeper so that it looks like a creeper and not like a desk and some. <laughs> okay, so I have all the panels for the creeper now printed out on some thicker paper and I'm just roughly cutting them out, then putting them on double face tape and then they can go on the creeper. It's not uh, assembled yet, so we can just glue the panels on the single pieces and then we glue it together and then we have a little creeper cupboard. <laughs> My dad helped me here again to put all the panels onto some double face tape first using this big heavy roll applicator. It is completely unnecessary to use this for this purpose but he has it for his company so why not I guess. And then we placed all the panels onto the creeper, put them in place, rubbed them on with a squeegee cut off all the excess and assembled the creeper. The creeper is done! Yay! It looks so cool! And it has the little door. <laughs> oh, I love it. Like, this is my head next to it. <laughs> it's, it's really big. Wow! <laughs> okay, but now it's finally time for the face up. This will probably be the biggest challenge since I never painted such a face before. I do have to spread some micro glitter though, just because, and then start to go in with a mix of pink and orange blushing. I don't want to go overboard with this, but the face definitely needs a bit of depth. I also add a bit of blushing to the forehead and nose area and blend it a little occasionally with a q-tip. 
When I'm satisfied with the blushing, I can then start sketching out the eye lines. I use my detail pencil for that and map them out. The face up will most likely be a little bit of a mix of cartoon and anime, so let's hope I can make it work. I slowly build up the pencil lines on the upper and lower lash line. It's best to start with thinner lines and then gradually make them thicker until you're satisfied. After sketching out both eyes, the face looks like this. And before painting them with black paint, I go in and paint the teeth white with acrylic paint. I never really painted teeth before either, so I was a bit scared to paint such a bold shark teeth smile. With the first layer of white paint added and needing to dry now, I can then go in with my nail art detail brush and paint all the eye lines black. This is the most satisfying part for me, because the initial lines are sketched out and I technically just have to follow them. Easier said than done, but oddly satisfying nonetheless. After lining all the eye lines, I also fill in the eyebrows with black. I make them look more cartoony this time and won't add any single hairlines or so. It looks so clean, I love it. And for some more dimension, I will add a couple of thin white lines underneath the eyebrows, the upper lash line and the lower lash line. As you can see, I also lined the mouth and teeth with some thinned down acrylic paint for some more depth. And I think I really like the look like this. And now I pretty much just need to add some gloss varnish onto the teeth and lower lash line of the doll face. And with that the face up is done and the only thing left are the eyes. To make those I made this design in Adobe Illustrator, printed it on cardboard and will now cut it out first. Then taking my half sphere mold I pour some UV resin in it, sprinkle a small amount of red glitter on top of it and place the iris good side down on top of the resin. I cure it for about 90 seconds under my UV lamp and then pour some white mixed UV resin on top of it. I cure it again for about 3-4 to four minutes and can now demold it. Oh yes, it looks really really nice. I like the subtle glitter, it gives the eye more dimension. I then just make a second eye in the exact same way and I think with that we are done. May I present to you my creeper doll. And here's my little creeper doll. It was honestly so much fun to try something so completely new to me and to work in such a cartoony style. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to never miss out on future videos. As always, big big shout out to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys are true heroes. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful creative mode. Oh man!